Every engine sound part two explained. In line three, three cylinders firing every 240 degrees creates an uneven rhythm that sounds agricultural at idle, but transforms into a metallic shriek under boost. The GR Yaris proves that displacement isn't everything. 268 horsepower from 1.6 liters with a sound that's part tractor, part rally car. The BMW i8 uses a three cylinder as its main engine, paired with electric motors. It sounds like a futuristic motorcycle. High pitched, buzzy, but somehow sophisticated. When the electric motors kick in, it creates this weird sci-fi symphony that shouldn't work, but does. Inline four, the world's most common engine configuration. Inline fours fire every 180 degrees, creating natural balance, but can sound harsh at high RPM. Honda's VTEC transforms the character completely. Docile economy car becomes a screaming banshee at 6,000 RPM. The K20 in the Civic Type R revs to 7,000 RPM and sounds like a motorcycle engine. That VTEC crossover at 6,000 RPM is automotive theater. The cam profile changes, the intake note sharpens, and suddenly your grocery getter sounds like a race car. Five cylinder. The five cylinder is audio engineering that shouldn't work, but absolutely does. That warbling offbeat howl comes from the firing order. One, two, four, five, three. It creates an uneven rhythm that's impossible to replicate with any other configuration. Audi discovered this sound by accident in 1976 when they needed something between their four and six cylinder engines. The modern 2.5 liter turbo five in the RS3 makes 400 horsepower stock, but nobody cares about the power. They buy them for that metallic shriek mixed with turbo whoosh. Here's the physics. The odd number of cylinders creates a firing pulse every 144 degrees of crank rotation instead of the 180 or 120 you get with fours and sixes. This creates harmonic frequencies that overlap in ways that make engineers nervous and enthusiasts aroused. Volvo's white block five cylinders from the 850T5R became the sleeper legend. These engines could handle 400 wheel horsepower on stock internals in a station wagon. The Swedish racing team that ran them in touring cars called the sound the moose call because at full throttle, it literally sounds like an angry moose. Ford's Focus RS MK2 used a Volvo derived five cylinder that made 305 horsepower and torque steered you into a ditch if you weren't careful. But that sound, that glorious five cylinder warble with overrun pops made it worth the terror. The five cylinders weakness, balance. Without careful engineering, they shake like a paint mixer. Volvo and Audi both use balance shafts spinning at twice the crankshaft speed. When these fail around 150,000 miles, your smooth five cylinder turns into a diesel tractor. Budget $2,500 for the fix. Inline six, six cylinders in perfect balance. The inline six is naturally smooth because it fires every 120 degrees with perfect primary and secondary balance. No vibration, no harshness, just pure mechanical music. The BMW S54 in the E46 M3 is the pinnacle of naturally aspirated inline sixes. It revs to 8,000 RPM and sounds like a turbine. Smooth, metallic, absolutely addictive. Individual throttle bodies give it that sharp intake howl that makes every downshift an event. Toyota's 2JZ GTE is the turbo inline six legend. Stock, it makes 320 horsepower. Built, it can handle 1,000 plus horsepower on stock internals. The sound is deeper than the BMW, more guttural. When the turbos spool, it creates this whoosh growl combination that's become the soundtrack of import drag racing. Straight eight, eight cylinders in a row from the golden age of racing. Straight eights are impossibly long, perfectly smooth, and produce a deep burble that modern engines can't replicate. The Bugatti Type 35 dominated Grand Prix racing in the 1920s with this configuration. The Duesenberg Model J's 6.9 liter straight eight made 265 horsepower in 1928, more than most modern cars. The sound is pure luxury, smooth, refined, but with enough displacement to move a 5,000 pound car with authority. These engines died out because they're too long for modern packaging. But that sound, that smooth, aristocratic burble, represents the pinnacle of pre-war engineering. V2, V-twin. Two cylinders in a V create the most distinctive motorcycle sound. Harley's 45 degree V-twin fires unevenly. One cylinder fires, then 315 degrees. Later, the other fires, then a 405 degree gap. This creates that signature lumpy idle that sounds broken, but is actually perfect. V4. 
Ducati's L-Twin, 90-degree V-Twin, sounds completely different. It's sharper, more aggressive, with a distinctive bark at idle that transforms into a shriek at 11,000 RPM. The desmodromic valve system adds its own mechanical clatter, rare and complex. V4S blend V-twin character with inline-4 smoothness. The sound is unique, rougher than an inline-4, smoother than a V-twin, with its own distinctive growl. Honda's VFR series uses gear-driven cams that create a distinctive whine mixed with the V4 growl. When VTEC kicks in, the sound sharpens dramatically. The Lancia Fulvia's narrow-angle V4 sounds agricultural but purposeful. It's the sound of Italian engineering solving problems with complexity. V5. Volkswagen's engineering experiment. Five cylinders in a narrow V creates an offbeat sound that's part inline 5, part V6. The Golf 5.5 was VW's attempt to bridge the gap between their four and six cylinder engines. Honda's RC211V dominated MotoGP with a 990 cubic centimeter V5 that screamed to 16,000 RPM. The sound was unlike anything else in motorcycle racing. Five cylinders creating a unique harmonic that gave Honda a competitive advantage. VR6. Volkswagen had a problem in 1991. They wanted six cylinder power, but only had four cylinder space. Their solution broke every rule. Squeeze six cylinders into a 15 degree V angle so narrow it only needed one cylinder head. The result sounds like nothing else. A deep guttural growl with a mechanical whir on top. It's not an inline six whale, not a V6 burble. VR6 owners call it the Wookie because at full throttle it sounds like Chewbacca with his foot caught in a door. The narrow angle means the exhaust pulses exit in a unique pattern. Unlike a traditional V6 where banks fire alternately, the VR6 fires in an overlapping sequence that creates its signature warble. The 24-valve VR6 in the R32 made 240 horsepower and came with all-wheel drive. It could do 0 to 60 in 5.6 seconds, but nobody bought it for speed. They bought it for that sound, especially with the factory exhaust flap that opened at 2,500 RPM. W8. Volkswagen's double V experiment. Two narrow angle V4s joined at the crank. The W8 in the Passat was complex, expensive, and sounded like two VR4s arguing with each other. It failed commercially, but created a unique sound that no other engine can replicate. W12, 12 cylinders in W formation. The Bentley W12 is smooth, powerful, and refined. It doesn't scream or shriek, it whispers threats. This is the sound of effortless luxury, of having so much torque that acceleration feels inevitable rather than violent. Audi's version is slightly more aggressive, but still maintains that W12 smoothness. It's the sound of German engineering applied to ultimate luxury. W16. 16 cylinders, four turbos, 1,500 horsepower. The W16 doesn't just make sound, it makes weather deep, complex, with turbo whoosh that sounds like a jet engine spooling up for takeoff. The Veyron started it, the Chiron perfected it. Both sound like controlled explosions happening at supersonic speed. VR5, VW's oddball five-cylinder experiment. Take the VR6 concept and remove one cylinder. The result is an offbeat, uneven sound that's part inline five warble, part VR6 growl, rare and distinctive. Boxer two, flat twin, two cylinders, horizontally opposed, the two CVs, air-cooled flat twin, sounds like a sewing machine having an asthma attack. BMW's motorcycle flat twins are smoother but still have that distinctive chuff-chuff rhythm. Boxer 12, flat 12. 12 cylinders, horizontally opposed. The Testarossa's flat 12 sounds broader, fuller than a traditional V12. It's the sound of 1980s excess, smooth but dramatic, refined but angry. The Porsche 917's flat 12 dominated Le Mans and Can-Am racing. It sounds like a traditional flat six multiplied by two. That distinctive Porsche rasp, but with twice the cylinders and twice the drama. RB 26 DETT. The RB 26 DETT from the Skyline GTR is JDM royalty. This twin turbo 2.6 liter inline six sounds completely different from Toyota's two JZ. Where the two JZ growls, the RB26 shrieks. It's metallic, almost hollow at idle, but transforms into a banshee wail at 8,000 RPM. The RB26 uses individual throttle bodies, one for each cylinder. This creates that distinctive intake howl that no other Turbo 6 can replicate. 
When you hear that mechanical sucking sound, followed by twin turbo spool, you know it's an RB. The RB, 26's weakness? Oil pump failure at high RPM. The stock pump can't keep up above 8,000 RPM with high G-forces. One track day with sticky tires and aggressive cornering can grenade a $15,000 engine. The N1 pump upgrade is mandatory for any serious driving. But that sound, that glorious JDM shriek, makes owners forget about the maintenance nightmares. It's the sound that launched a thousand initial D fantasies. Crossplane inline four, Yamaha's crossplane inline four spaces the pistons at 90 degree intervals instead of 180. This creates the big bang effect. Two cylinders fire close together, then a gap. It sounds lumpy at idle, screaming at redline. And absolutely mental in between. Traditional inline fours sound like angry bees. The crossplane sounds like it's trying to be a V4 without the complexity. MotoGP riders say it gives better rear tire grip because of the uneven power pulses. LS1. The LS1 from the C5 Corvette makes 350 horsepower stock, weighs less than most four cylinders, and fits in everything from Miatas to RX7s. That distinctive LS lope at idle comes from the aggressive cam profile and firing order. The 1 dash, 8 dash, 7 dash, 2 dash, 6 dash, 5 dash, 4 dash, 3. Firing order creates that characteristic burble that's become the soundtrack of every car make in America. Why is it in everything? It's compact, lightweight, reliable, and makes power everywhere. Plus, a junkyard LS1 costs less than a built four cylinder. Uh, when you can have V8 power for Honda money, why wouldn't you? VR30. Nissan's VR. 30D DTT, replace the beloved VQ37 in the Q50 and Q60 Red Sport. Stop, it sounds muffled. But open it up with downpipes and it transforms into something between a 2JZ and a modern BMW Turbo 6. It can handle 500 wheel horsepower on stock internals. But enthusiasts miss the naturally aspirated shriek of the old VQ, E46 M3 GTR. This isn't just any V8. It's one of the most exotic BMW engines ever made. The P60B40 V8 was built specifically to dominate ALMS racing. BMW needed to homologate it for the street. So they built exactly 10 road legal versions. This 4.0 liter naturally aspirated V8 made 444 horsepower at 7,500 RPM and sounded nothing like the regular E46 M3's inline six. Where the S54 inline six wails, the P60B40 screams. It's raw metallic, almost NASCAR like. because that's essentially what it is, a race engine, barely tamed for the street. The flat plane crank gives it a Ferrari-like shriek at high RPM. The GTR dominated ALMS so thoroughly that competitors complained. BMW won every race in 2001, until rule changes essentially banned the car. Those 10 street versions, they're worth over $500,000 today, if you can find one. E30 M3, the E30 M3 had the S14 four-cylinder, and that's exactly what made it special. The S14 started as a 2.3 liter, making 192 horsepower. It sounds like an angry sewing machine, high-pitched, metallic, and absolutely furious. This isn't the smooth BMW inline six sound people expect. It's raw, mechanical, and unapologetic. The Sport Evolution got a 2.5 liter version, making 238 horsepower. Only 600 were made. At full throttle, it doesn't sound like a four cylinder at all. It screams like a motorcycle engine, which makes sense since BMW's motorcycle division helped develop it. This four-cylinder won more touring car championships than any BMW before or since. It beat V8s, turbo sixes, everything. The secret, it could rev forever and weighed nothing. The S14's weakness, timing chain guides. When they fail, and they will, valves meet pistons. Budget $5,000 for a rebuild, but you'll have one of the most successful race engines ever made. Every configuration tells a story. The five cylinders warble comes from mathematics that shouldn't work. The VR6's growl exists because engineers refused to accept limitations. The RB26's shriek defined JDM culture. The 787B's scream is Japan's Le Mans victory cry. 
In 20 years, these sounds might only exist in videos like this. But for now, we can still hear them on the street, at the track, in our driveways. Drop a comment with the engine sound that makes you smile like an idiot when you hear it. And subscribe if you want to hear breakdowns like this.